I sent my emails, my slides off to, to Michael, and he came back and said, fantastic slides, John, but you don't talk about social media. Everyone's going to be sitting there thinking, what's in it for me? Okay, here we go. So, as a few people have mentioned, there's a whole bunch of tools out there, platforms, applications in the social media space. And the really cool thing is that a lot of them talk to each other, talk to other tools, and allow you to do really cool and exciting things. Sometimes they talk to each other and weird stuff happens that you just weren't expecting, you don't really understand. And then you let people use them and it all just gets crazy. And it's impossible to model and nobody really understands what the hell is going on. We need a way of analysing this and modelling this that takes the logos out of the picture and enables us to talk about what it is we're actually trying to achieve, why we're trying to achieve it, what we're going to do about achieving it, and then we can stick the logos in at the end where we know what it is we're actually hoping to do and we've got some way of controlling all this. And that's where systems theory comes in. Okay. So, audience participation time. What's that? What does it do? Uh, no. Yes! I thought I'd start with an easy one. Tickles? Yeah. Any other Pen. ones? Pen? Yeah. It helps people fly. Or helps birds fly. Helps birds fly. Yeah, okay. Is it Fletching a system? For oh, sorry? Fletching for arrows. Fletching for arrows. Sorry, John. Is it a system? There's a component. Someone's done this before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's this? It's. <coughs> yes, well, that's yellow belly sap sucker. And there's our little feather. So, what do birds do? They fly around, eat, tweet, yeah. <laughs> Is this a system? <laughs> yes, no? It's a biological system. Biological system? All right. How about this? What's this? system. Sorry, it's the Panamanian rainforest, just north of Panama City, Central America, southern territory of the yellow bellied sapsucker. Yes, it's an ecosystem. Okay. So it creates oxygen, captures carbon, and all sorts of other kinds of stuff. In terms of system analysis, though, if we go back to our little bird, we need to be able to start to define what the systems are. So we need to be able to draw a boundary around that system. We need to be able to agree amongst ourselves what that boundary is. If we can't draw the boundary, we end up analysing the entire global eco-techno-financial social system, and that way lies madness. Within that boundary, there's a whole bunch of stuff. There are feathers, there are bones, there's the digestion system. So we can have systems within systems. Okay. There's stuff crosses that boundary. Just to get a bit academic, there is a hypothetical construct called the closed system, where nothing crosses the boundary. Really dull, doesn't exist, not worth studying. Everything's an open system in real life. Stuff crosses the boundaries. And here we've got food, water, the bird sees what's going on, so information is crossing the boundary, it hears what's going on. Stuff exits the system, okay? So it eats, poos, maybe it lays eggs. There's a difference between the inputs and the outputs. If the outputs are the same as the inputs, you have a pipe. A pipe is not a system. There needs to be some kind of transformation taking place between those inputs and outputs. Well, is that all that birds do? Who lay eggs, fly around a bit? Well, they exhibit social behaviour. Some, some birds fly in huge flocks, some birds are on their own, some birds build big elaborate nests, some birds just scrape a hole in, in, in the ground and lay their eggs on that. So there's some kind of behaviour. Now, if you were to dissect that bird and analyse its individual atoms and molecules and components, you would not be able to identify the behaviour that that bird exhibits. So there's an emergent property of the system that you cannot identify by analysing the components alone. You need to look at the whole system and ideally look at the system in, in its environment. So about 50 years ago, a uh, very smart chap up in Lancaster, in Czechland, started looking at chemical systems. He's an industrial engineer and he did lots of modelling of systems. He drew diagrams like this with processes and subsystems and arrows and flowing and stuff. But what he discovered was that no matter how carefully he analysed that, it never quite worked out the way it was designed. And the reason the conclusion he came to was because there were people in the system. There were clients that they were making this chemical stuff for. They changed their minds and they changed their specifications and they got away and they changed delivery times. Within the system, you had groups of people, the actors that deliver the system, the people that work within the system. And they formed little subgroups, whether you call them departments or tribes or whatever they are, they form little subgroups. And quite often, those subgroups don't always agree on what they're going to be doing, and you get conflicts. And the important thing isn't to figure out who's right and who's wrong, but to just recognise that occasionally there are differences of opinion, 
And that's something to think about when looking at a human activity social system. We also have a perspective that lie in the top. And it's important that you're thinking about human activity systems to recognise that there is a world view of what that system is there to achieve. And not everybody will agree on that, but you need to identify that. It's one of the things we'll be talking about later. And there's also, a bit controversial perhaps, an owner of the system. And as a lot of people on Ning discovered, they didn't own their system when Ning wanted to change the terms and conditions. Okay? With any human activity system, the owner is the person that has the power to shut the system down or fundamentally change its purpose. Okay? So this is the start of a rich picture talking about a human activity system. And what we'll do afterwards is we'll go over to the whiteboard and we'll invite you to collectively start to draw the human activity system of Brism. We started to do this online already, but we'll start with a clean whiteboard. We'll see how far we get and then we'll start circulating that around and continue that development process. Thank you.